Good morning, everybody. This is Kim Danke coming to you live from Kennesaw, Georgia, where I get to happily represent the Shibboleth lifestyle here locally in the community and through Facebook in the mornings. So when you hop on here this morning, please say good morning, where you're watching from and what type of Shibboleth day you are going to have today. Today is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022, and we are 39 days in to the 2022 edition of the Game of Life. And I enjoy thinking about life as a game. I enjoy having things to help me manage. And I feel like before Shibboleth, I was wanting those things, but I didn't have them in a way that were purposeful to me. So I'm so thankful for the management system that the Shibboleth lifestyle is. So today, today's 365 names, titles, and attributes of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the word of the day for that is brightness of the glory of God. And Jesus is the light, and he is the exact representation of God, came here in human form to be a part of who we were, and I'm thankful for that. And he is the brightness of the glory of God. So anytime you're in a dark spot, you might want to look for the brightness. And whether it's actually there in that room, a little light you can turn on to help improve your spirits, or just looking deep within for that brightness that the Lord has already given you when you have accepted him, look for those things. So I talked the other day about... Uh, being resilient. And one of the parts of that definition was like something recoiled into, into shape or it recoiled. It just set itself back up. It was resilient. But I want to talk a little bit more about that word resilient. And a lot of the things that we do, we don't automatically just pop back into place. No, resiliency is all that is it's great and everything, but really it's kind of like sometimes a if us live in life you know, like a like a thing like if you had some rubberized or um, metal thing that you know pop back into place that'd be resilient. But see, we aren't we aren't a rubberized or mechanical thing. We are a human being with feelings, thoughts, and all kinds of experiences that have gone into our life. And resiliency, I think, is built up in people over time to bounce back. You got to bounce back. But it, I don't think it's automatic. That's why my favorite word is resolute. And that is being admirably, purposeful, determined, and unwavering. So on those days where we need to be bouncing back from something, but we aren't really feeling the bounce back of resiliency, let's be resolute. Let's be resolute. Admirably, purposeful, determined and unwavering. So I just wanted to give y'all that little extra insight on the word resiliency that I offered up the other day. And I had to be resolute yesterday. I didn't even think of the word resolute. It may have popped into my head yesterday, but really it was battle. I had a battle yesterday and there's so many things that ran through my head. They were, one, you have enough holidays. I don't know why you aren't just having one. But then I have to think, I don't feel good after, I, mentally or physically, I don't sleep well and disappointed, you know, why would I do that? So I fought the battle, but I was looking in that pantry and wanting something to eat, even after I'd had everything that I could have to eat by three o'clock yesterday afternoon. So then I, I am left and that's what I do sometimes. But anyway, I, I did that and I still... I thought, okay, I'll just eat this. I'll do that. I know that's worked before. And then I will just um, cut it off. But after that, I was still in that pantry. And let me just tell you, if my husband's Tostitos or potato chips had been opened, if the bag had been opened, I might have lost. I might have lost. But every time I went back in there, everything was closed. Why is it that all of his food is closed and all mine's open? That's because he's not a grazer, um, and he just eats it purposefully, and then he stops at a reasonable amount, and I don't uh, have that, so I'm very thankful, and I even went downstairs, and I thought, what has he got open down there? 
and there was a bag open, but it was not enough in there. And I thought, I don't want to, listen, this is the stuff that ran through my head. I don't want to finish that off because then he'll know I ate it. So I didn't eat that because of that reason. So I don't, I don't care. Whatever the reasons were, I, the battle ensued and I won. And after I kind of got over all of that, I was hungry last night. My stomach was growling, but I don't really care. It's so weird how at night it does not bother me if my stomach is growling or I'm hungry. But, but during the daytime, I like to eat. Huh. So anyway, I, I battled yesterday and I won. So I'm very happy with myself. Sometimes we got to pat ourselves on the back. That's why I posted that this morning. I'm like, battle ensued on 2-8-22 and I won. Sometimes it's nice to acknowledge the conquering. Okay. So, because we got to conquer every single day. Um, what else was I thinking about? I don't know. So, who's on here with me this morning? Good morning, Dawn. I am F Day for Dawn. Good morning, Colleen from Michigan, having a perfect day. And Julie from uh, Indiana, having an I am F Day. Good morning. Good morning, Ron from Lilburn, having a perfect day. Hey, Nicole. Good morning from Woodstock. Um, good morning, Colleen. Brightness of the glory of God. Yes, thank you for typing that in. Hey, Brandy. Good morning from Ackworth, Georgia. Look forward to seeing you soon. Um, hey, Samantha, good morning. Yes, I love the sunshine, Samantha. Happy Wednesday. I pray strength and focus over all of you this morning. That's so sweet. I love Samantha's prayers for us each morning. I am F. Day, Chatsworth, Georgia. Hey, America. <laughs> America. Erica, that's your new name. America. Anyway, I put words together sometimes and I saw morning and Erica and America came out. Anyway, good morning, Erica. I am F. Day in Wichita. Hey, Kathy, good morning from Michigan. Having a perfect day. And Dana from Mulvane, Kansas. I am F. Day. Hey, Patricia Hurt. Good morning. Patricia's up with us this morning. I am F. Day today. Hey, Chris, good morning. Jacksonville, Florida. I am F. Day. And she's Ubering today. Must be some decent weather down there. Hey, Charlene, good morning from Michigan. Having a perfect day. Hey, Diane from Columbus, Mississippi. I am F. Day. Thank you for sharing. Y'all, the share button is somewhere on your screen. If you would click that, that would be awesome. Um, yes, Chris. Hey, April, good morning. Happy, uh, a perfect day here in Bainbridge. And Sandy, good morning from the front lines in Bechtelsville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> She's battling on the front lines. Hey, Andrea, it's a good day for a perfect day. Good morning from South Georgia. Sherry Ditto, perfect day in Kennesaw. And Kathy, might change my mind and make it an IMF day. Brought a mighty muffin for breakfast, but I'm seriously not hungry, so why eat? Great advice. And we, I'm glad you thought through that. That's awesome. Um, wonderful. So the other thing that I wanted to, that I was thinking about, and I wanted to mention, I, w I read something the other day or watched a little video, and it was about a person who had run a race. And there was somebody at the finish line when this person crossed the finish line. And they said to the person that had been running, wow, you are so gifted. You are so gifted to be able to do that. And the person who ran the race was actually offended by that because they thought, I have worked really hard for this. This didn't just happen. I got up every day and ran for this, even when I didn't want to. I did it on the days I wanted to and the days I didn't want to. You know, I've been watching Joey and Alicia prepare for these marathons that they're doing. They're working at that. It's not that they're naturally gifted at that. I mean, if y'all are, I'm sorry. But, but anyway... They're, they probably know I'm not being mean, but I mean, they're probably not naturally gifted at that. They just are working at it because they want to do it. So if somebody said to them, oh, you're just gifted, they're going to be like, uh, hello, I have been running and walking and doing all this in preparation. So it is kind of offensive when somebody tells you you're gifted at something when honestly you've put forth a lot of effort and work into that. Shibboleth requires that same effort and work. So sometimes people think, that, you know, people who've been in maintenance are, have an easy time after they've been doing it for a while. It's really not the case. The case is we've been doing it long enough to know that it's better to do it than not do it. It's that simple. It's better to do it than not do it. It's better to fit into your clothes and, than not fit in your clothes. It's better to feel good than not feel good. It's better to have health numbers that are right than not. So it's just the longevity that has become our friend, and but it is still, it's still a battle, and it's still work, and it still requires being resolute, 
and determining every day. Hey, Suzette, good morning, Southeast Kansas. Struggling due to the lack of scale movement, but I know I'm sticking to the plan. That's right, you just stick to it. You just stick to it. And this morning, I was analyzing a few things on my app. Um, I love to look at the graph. Now, if you are not marking what type of day you're having and your weight occasionally, like I mark my weight pretty much every day unless for some reason I've forgotten to mark it. This graph, I will look at that and check out so many different things. So right now, this I'm trending above the line. Okay, I don't want to be trending above the line. I want to be on the other side of this line. 140 is my line in the sand. But all of a sudden, I'm trending above 140. And my goal is to get below that 140 and be trending down there again. So I'm going to have to put forth a little bit. I'm going to have to actually pull out some of that determination I had in the beginning of Shibboleth and maybe just do three meals a day because that's all I did in Shibboleth. And now that I'm in maintenance, oh, you know, it's really not hard for me to do a snack or an extra and I enjoy them, so I do. But if I really want to start trending below that, I'm going to have to tighten it back up again. But that line in the sand, you got to have a line in the sand. And you've got to have some visuals that help you see that line in the sand. If I didn't have these visuals to see that, it couldn't motivate me to get my little, my little dots below that line. So if we look at this, see, I'm kind of trending. You probably can't see it. But see, I'm trending above that line. I don't want to trend above the line. So then I click this little drop down menu and I click last 60 days. So you can see I had some spots where I was down through there. I mean, down below the line. So what I did was I clicked, you can click on the dot. So let's say that you want to see that's a really low dot. Let me click on that dot. If I touch that dot, it tells me the date and what I weighed. So December 20th, 2021. Well, then if I'm really curious about it, I can go to my weekly timing chart. When I get to my weekly timing chart, there's a little button here. I can press this button and it's going to ask me what year. So I'm going to pop that back to 2021 and I'm going to put it on December. Okay, so now it's going to go to my timing chart for December. And I can't remember what day that was that I looked at December something, but I'm going to click that one. So I can kind of see where I was on that date that I was really low. I can see what was I eating? What was I doing? But what I really like to see is if I have a really low weight on there, how many perfect days were there before that low? Because then it gives me an idea of how many perfect days I need to have in a row to get back down to that low then I need to get out of the habit of hog troughing on a holiday so that I am not trending above the line I do not want to be trending at. So there's a lot of management and that goes on in the Shibboleth lifestyle. And in management, you are always analyzing things, looking at processes, seeing ways that you can make things better, and then applying those things. It's the same thing with Shibboleth, and we could not be managing anything more important than our health and our, our, our life. So I hope that y'all enjoyed that this morning. Let's see. Uh, good morning, Kristen. Perfect day in Kennesaw. And that's right, Sherry. Sherry says it. Maintenance is a daily decision. That's right. Yeah. Andrea says hustle beats gifted any day. Yep. There's a lot of people who aren't gifted at things, but because they've determined they want it, they go after it and they hustle. Good morning, Valerie from Indiana. Having a perfect day. And Michelle in Michigan, I am F day. Hey, Cheryl, good morning in Clarksville, Georgia. She says, I still manage every day in maintenance. I have gotten three pounds below her goal weight. That's awesome. So after a holiday on Monday, followed my Tiger 16 day yesterday, and I'm still below my goal weight. I love Shibboleth. Yes. And those are the type things that, you know, over the 10 going on 11 years that Cheryl has been in Shibboleth, that she has figured out how to do. And she just does it. She's figured out what works for her. And, you know, sometimes you're going to do things that don't really work for you, but then you don't just keep doing them. You say, oops, that didn't work. I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to edit. I'm going to change it. And I feel like I've been in a little phase of trying something new and it's not working. <laughs> so, um, so I've got to go back to kind of like, you know, remember the first love that it talks about in Revelation? 
Got to go back to the first love I had when I started Shibboleth. I'm like, I am not a weak person. I am not going to have moments of mental weakness, and I am not going to need a freebie, an extra, or a snack. And I did that for five months, and boom. Now I need to go back to that to tighten it up. All right, so today's devotion says, it's uh, from Jesus Always by Sarah Young. Rejoice that I understand you completely and love you with perfect, unending love. Many people are afraid that anyone who comes to know them fully will look down on them or even reject them. So they strive to keep others at a safe distance, disclosing only the parts of themselves they think are acceptable. This way of interacting with others tends to feel safer, but it leads to loneliness. Be thankful that there is one who sees straight through your defenses and pretenses. There is no one hiding from me. I know absolutely everything about you. So rest in the wonder of being fully known, yet delighted in. You don't have to work at trying to earn my love. The truth is, nothing could ever stop me from loving you. Because you are mine, bought with my blood, you are accepted and treasured forever. You need to tell yourself this truth over and over till it seeps into your inner being and changes the way you view yourself. Self-acceptance is the path to self-forgetfulness, which is the royal road to joy. Oh, that was a last sentence if there ever was one. Self-acceptance is the path to self-forgetfulness, which is the royal road to joy. That was That was good. That was really good. And when you think about this, um, hold on. Fully known yet delighted in. That's just a, such a sweet little thing that we are fully known yet he delights in us. Um, okay, so you know I'm on my little. You might be a food addict if um, little Jeff Foxworthy thing. We'll call him. We'll call him. I don't know what we'll call him. We'll call him Kim Dankies. But so if th these are serious though. I want them to be funny because they can be funny, but it's actually serious. So, the one I thought of this morning, and I am stalling because I'm trying to think of it, is... <laughs> I don't know why I think these such these serious things are so funny. If you, if you eat to, to excess and to the point of being uncomfortable... You might be a food addict. So, all right. Uh, weight in Wednesday, down six pounds. Diane, good morning, Diane. Hey, Michelle, good morning. Watching from Mississippi this morning, traveling to watch Shorter University play tennis today. Oh, I hope your son does great. I know they will. It's awesome. Have fun. Have fun. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm going to hop off of here, let you go today. I know I'm eating at a restaurant. And I'm going to have a burger and broccoli. So, that's just what I do. And you know, it, the, the fries that other people are eating, you know, and when they go, um, sweet potato fries, I'm like, I know those are good, but they're still a potato. They're still a category three energy carb. Oh, what, what did y'all think about my little strawberry video yesterday? Did y'all see that little strawberry video? If you didn't, I'll show you, then we'll hop off because it's only a few seconds long. I'm a category five fruit. I'm one of the best you can have, but you still need to put me with a lean protein and a fibrous carb, unless you're having just 50 calories of me. <laughs> oh, that was a, a filter on, on an app. And so I thought, hmm, that'd be fun. Um, good morning, Christy from Ballground, Georgia. Having a perfect day. <laughs> it is funny, Julie. I've gotten a lot of people laughing at that. So, so I think about potatoes. And I'm looking at those folks' sweet potato fries and other fries, and and I might want to reach over and get one, but I don't. But it's, when I order, broccoli just rolls off my tongue now instead of French fries. Even on a holiday, I think, yeah, you could, oh, girl, you could order some tater tots or something. <laughs> That's why longevity is important, y'all. Just stick with it. Um, yeah, you can share it, Andrea. It's in the Kennesaw Shibboleth group, which is a public group, so you can share it from there if you want to. That's fine. Awesome. Diana's in Columbus, Mississippi. Let's see. Amanda, having a perfect day. We'll have to watch back on replay. Okay. Have a great day. All right. Y'all go and determine your day. I've already marked IMF day. And if you are watching on replay, hello. And please type in hashtag Shibboleth for his glory. Bye, everybody.